while drinking several litres of water and attempting to enjoy his gooseberry jam. But the issue of cost threatens to distract him from his new regime. Can everyone afford to be going once, twice a week uh, to have this treatment done? Um, you know, the case of changing your lifestyle itself is something, you know, if you deep down inside can do, um, then you will do it. But it's one of those things where sometimes money does play a part. Yeah. But while Jess and Lee keep the faith, Neela is facing a dilemma and is close to giving up. It's Saturday evening and I could have gone out, but that would have meant drinking. And Dr. Jani said that I'm supposed to avoid alcohol. Now I could go out and not drink, but I think I'd end up, I, I just think I'd have a rubbish time. After several nights in, Neela makes a risky decision. I've decided to go out. I thought, well, I could sit at home or I could go out, not drink, but you know, it's better than sitting indoors. So, wish me good luck. Week four, and for Jess, simple things like mint and cinnamon tea are now becoming part of normal life. And it's basically designed for people who are predominantly pitta, or dry and fiery and bitter. Um, and it's meant to be a cooling type of balancing tea. It's just a nice kind of habit to get into. And the breathing exercises seem to be going down well. I feel as though my mood is more stable, I have a lot more energy, I'm much calmer, and I'm able to stop my mind from racing. It's up to the top and hold the position, elbow nice and high. Back As for Lee, he's warming to that more spiritual approach to Ayurveda. It was a case of uh, maybe identifying the small things um, which people are, are, are doing, and whether it be having, you know, two bars of chocolate a day or drinking, fizz, you know, drinking fizzy drinks or, you know, stuff that you really shouldn't be doing. And if you could just make a little change to you know, the way you live your life, that can make a massive difference. But whilst Lee remains on course, there's no sign that Ayurveda or Hinduism has won over Neela yet. So I'm cooking and I'm not supposed to be eating garlic, but um, I don't really care because um, I can't eat my meals without garlic. It's just really, really boring. No garlic, no onion, no chilli. And it's just like, well, I can't, I can't really be bothered. So, um, I know it sounds rubbish, but you know, I'm, I'm eating garlic. While our patients try to heal themselves, I have some questions of my own. Most Hindus I know practice their faith at the temple, not through healthcare. So I'm returning to Brighton to quiz Miland and Asmita, who insist that there is a definite link between Hinduism and Ayurveda. I hear a lot of Hindu ideas coming through, but a lot of people will say to me, no, no, Hinduism is about the temple, it's about worship of God. Now, do you feel that there is a religious, a Hindu side to what you're doing? The temples, the rituals, the, you know, the god and goddesses, they are just a symbol. But the real Hinduism is that be pure, you know, be nice to each other, uh, respect each other, have love. The true Hindu religion comes from the Vedic religion is the Vedas and that talks about the soul and the Atma and the inner meditation as the main form of worship. That is the real way in which we should worship. That becomes part then of preventing illnesses as well so that we don't get stressed out, we, we prevent anxiety, we prevent depression, those sort of things. Uh, if we keep that focused, then automatically our conduct in life will be more healthy, more wholesome, and that will prevent disease indirectly. This is where the link comes in between the Hindu belief and the Ayurveda as a science, as a health science, if you like, as a medicine. Okay, the critic would say, drink more water, do some massage if you've got muscle pain, um, calm yourself when you're stressed. It sounds like common sense, right? Is, this, is there more that Ayurveda is giving us? Prior to about five, six years ago, all these common sense, uh, you know, suggestions and advices were not that widespread. This is not just about common sense, it's about the 
Western people drawing from the ancient and well-established wisdom of the living, uh, the healthy living of the Indian people, the Hindu culture. I found Milind and Asmita's answers convincing. Ayurveda was part and parcel of a wealth of ancient Indian wisdom. You see, there was once much more to it than massage and self-help. Ayurveda was once a complex science. It dealt with surgeries and serious diseases. Most of that has been taken over by Western hospitals and GPs. But it seems to me that what's left is the spiritual side. It's, if you like, the Hindu side. It's what deals with self-help and self-reflection, meditation, and trying to find balance in our lives. Week five, and our patients travel to Brighton to see the doctors and discuss their progress. The last time we saw Lee, he was warming to the spiritual idea of self-improvement. My energy levels and stress levels have come, you know, massively down as in stress, but energy levels a lot higher. A massive change also is the amount of water I drink. I hardly drank any water at all. Yes. And I'm drinking one to three liters a day. Oh, well done. Yes. Which is, you know, which is making a massive difference. The gooseberry jam that you gave me, yeah. I actually have to block my nose. <laughs> I have to block my nose and swallow it, but I at least gave it a bash and tried it. But Lee is still bothered by the potential cost of the treatment. Money is tight for everyone. For some people, it's impossible to, to get two or three sessions a week. Because of our spiritual uh, side of life and our Hindu belief, uh, we do uh, feel that we have to be sensitive to the, to the patient's sort of, you know, needs and their capacity to pay. When most of the people come to me for a treatment, then often, you know, they are taking excess amount of alcohol yeah. or smoking excess amount of cigarettes. So I ask them to reduce that because it's not good for the health and the amount of money they save by doing that. They said themselves that I think I've did the good things to cut down on that and to come and have a treatment. An average Ayurvedic treatment costs about 60 pounds a session. But a far bigger obstacle than affordability is skepticism. So far, Neil has been prepared to put up with physical discomfort for the sake of her social life. And for that reason, I think she's been a tough challenge for Millind. Hello, Hello sweetheart. Hello. Nice, to nice to see, see you. you oh, nice yes. to see you too. Yes. There's an ancient Indian healing manual called the Charaka Samhita, and it advises physicians never to treat a patient who is skeptical and who might not obey his orders. Her good health is at stake, but so is his good name. So even by ancient standards, Milland is really putting his reputation on the line. I've said from the outset that it was going to be a bit difficult to, to achieve some results in a short time. I think in my head I value the stuff that I do on a day-to-day -day basis more than maybe I value my health. So that's what I mean. If, it, if I was to do something like this, it would be a change in attitude in my head, a change in attitude about my life and what's important to me. Is it my health? Is it because I want my rheumatoid arthritis to go into remission or is it because I want to have fun? <laughs> you don't have to make massive changes. What I suggest mm. you do, That's make a small changes. Mm. Make mm. a small changes so you don't feel it's a burden or you have to do this and that as soon as you wake up. Ayurveda is against not enjoying your life. It says prasanna atmendriya manaha swasthya iti abhidiyate. A happy soul and a happy mind is a good healthy body. It's not a case that I don't believe they would work. I actually think that it could work. I think that if I gave it all 110%, then maybe it could have some sort of positive effect. Do I value my health more? Always keen to stay positive, Millen changes his approach away from the body and on to the mind and spirit. I certainly see a shift again when we first met mm. and what you're saying to me now. Do you know, with all this sort of overall, I look, all this, look at all this as an overall holistic counselling and a therapy, you know, the holistic approach. It was that shift in the thinking which I'm very encouraged by, so well done. <laughs> if Milland had longer with Neela, he might be able to break down her defences. But this shows that in many ways Ayurveda is perhaps linked to Hinduism. 
In Christianity, for example, faith healing can work thanks to faith. Likewise, in Ayurveda, you have to believe you're going to get better. And that certainly seems to have been the case with Jess. But she'll have to reveal whether it was the Ayurveda or the antidepressants that made the difference. I improved so quickly. I think that was largely due to the Ayurvedic treatments rather than the antidepressants. The Ayurvedic treatments give you a, a huge sense of self-awareness and they allow you to consciously control how you feel. And I found with the breathing, I got to the point where I could almost subconsciously do the proper abdominal breathing. I only had to take three to five proper breaths and I could really, um, I could really sort of uh, settle myself down. This is so interesting. Even in three breaths, you can just relax so much. So that's a very important aspect of Ayurveda and even the Hindu philosophy, doing those nice deep pranayama breathing. Uh, that gets extended into meditation uh, and, and into the religious sort of side of things. We'll see you again. Hindu, it may be. Holistic, it certainly is. Thank you. Thanks very much. Big <laughs> but ultimately, what counts is whether Ayurveda actually works. Thank you. And the only people who can make that call are our three patients. Sashmita, thank you very much. All the best. Right, well. Off to you. Cheers. The end of our experiment and time to reflect. Five weeks has only given our patients a taste of Ayurveda. I want to know if they think it's worked and crucially, whether they've benefited from Millen's Hindu approach. Lee's recovery rate has improved, he's got more energy, he's enjoying his cricket and his water. And it looks like he's open to the idea of self-improvement. Very open-minded. I, I, I have learned a lot about myself in the process. Whatever people say to you, you know, is to be able to take it in and then try it. And if it doesn't work, try something else, but always be willing to better yourself in some way. Neela's rheumatoid arthritis has shown no improvement, but I sense she now understands more about Ayurveda itself. I think it has a lot to do with religion now. I think it's got a lot to do with Hinduism, and I kind of see like similarities in, in the philosophy. I think it could work. It's definitely worth giving a try if I'm willing to be committed to it. Five weeks ago, Jess was stressed and depressed. Now, she appears to be in control of her emotions. She certainly looks happier. I was really surprised how much better I felt in such a short period of time with such very simple techniques. And I, I didn't and I still don't know anything about Hinduism. And even though I didn't really invest in it, it still helped me. And I'd like to pursue it further. In five weeks, that's significant change and Milland is convinced he could achieve even more, given the time. We feel passion about helping and changing people's lives, and I wish we could see these three more uh, regularly in the future for a year or two to, switch, to show them and demonstrate to them the full benefit that, that Ayurvedic therapy could achieve. Milland and Asmita may not have had all the time they wished for, but in just five weeks, they have begun to change the minds of Neela, Jess and Lee. Each one has had to think a lot more about how mind and body and spirit are linked. That is the holistic way. So maybe a Hindu perspective really can help make each one of us a little bit better.